It feels to me like game devs are in this weird position where they can't say exactly what they want to say and they can't portray exactly what they want to portray because they're too scared, they're too wrapped up in offending people. Oh, we can't quite do that because it's going to offend this group of people. We can't add this person into the group because that will kind of offend or marginalize this other group. It's, it's all rubbish. That should never be the focus of any video games. And we actually have a term for that down here in New Zealand. We call that no balls. You got no balls. Video games are a creative space. They've always been that and they should always be that. They should never have become a checkbox list of things that we need to include in our game so that little Timmy can feel represented. But what actually happened was people started complaining about it Little Timmy got butt hurt and the game developers got no balls. They didn't have the balls to stand up for it and be like, get wrecked, buy something else, dude. Like, that's not what we do here. Find another game developer that caters to what you want. Buy and support their games. Why didn't game developers do that? Why didn't they stand up, grow a, a spine and just hit them with the facts? No balls. And I've come to talking about this topic, man, because I played Space Marine 2 a couple weeks ago but it took me a while to figure out and really absorb why that game felt so new. Why it felt so refreshing to play. And I'm in this weird place right now of very much playing catch up with all of these cool games that everybody really enjoyed. But they came out like 6, 7, 8, 10 years ago. I'm talking early Assassin's Creed, Red Dead Redemption 2, Ghost Recon, the Far Cry series. I'm hearing lines of dialogue. I'm seeing characters on the screen. And my first thought is, holy shit, there is no way that they could make this game today. The developers would come under so much social media criticism and hate that they'd get cancelled for, for portraying characters the way that they've portrayed them or for saying the things that they're saying in the game. And it's only after I've thought about all this that it, it just hit me, man. All these topics, these these ways of speaking, this dialogue, this writing, these characters, they are what's missing from the games that we're getting right now. It's like that time is gone. It's like it's not allowed anymore. That's so messed up. It's like game devs have put the training wheels on every single game that they're making. Like we're adults. The average age of gamers is, is just going up. You're allowed to be offensive. Yeah, you can totally do that. You have a creative platform where you can make some people laugh out loud and at exactly the same time offend someone else that's a good thing it's a good thing and if you feel like making a game that has a bunch of meathead white dudes in it running around blowing shit up and that's all you want to have in the game and you come under critique you come under fire from social media or from the public when your game releases for not being diverse enough throw a backbone and stand up for the reason why you made it the way that you did. Don't crumble under the weight of, of like some social media activists, dude. Like stand by your game. There's nothing wrong with that. Take the heat. Take the criticism. Stand in the flames, man. Stand in the flames or no balls. Now, of course, I'm only speaking for me. I don't know how you guys feel about this. Maybe you completely disagree. Let me know what you think about this. But for me personally, if I see a game dev just being like, Fuck no, dude, we made this because of this and we're sticking by it. I'd be like, hell yeah, dude. I, I support that. I support that 100%. I feel like we desperately need that. Like we need those groups of people who wrote that shit from like 10 years ago. We need those guys back in charge of shit, man, because they wrote people, characters like us, like just, just ordinary average people. Speaking like we speak to our friends without fear. Yeah, let me put it to you guys another way, man. You're hanging out with your group of friends. You guys are talking to each other, talking shit about whatever it is that you're talking about. There is no way that if that was recorded, that you would be happy with putting that shit out on social media. There's no way in hell. So my ultimate point here really is when we see a character in a game that seems more normal, like we're hanging out with our friends speaking like that. We're like, oh shit, dude, that's awesome. Like it feels closer. You feel closer to that character. They feel more normal. This whole like PC shit, like if no one can say anything, everyone's 
You can't say any stuff like that. You can't do that kind of stuff. No one is like that, actually. Behind closed doors, when they're sitting on their couch, chilling with their family, with their close friends, everyone just starts popping off, man, because they're comfortable. They're not afraid. And that's who people really are. So that's why it feels better when you see something that's closer to that on the screen. It's just natural, man. Pretending to not be that, it feels fake. And we can all, f we can all detect it too. So I want to give you guys some insight into my own personal experiences with game devs. I've been in those meeting rooms and I've had to talk to people in a way that is is very, very self-censoring to who I am. See, it's not really until the advent of social media that the, the greater Western world become made aware of the fact that down here in Australia and New Zealand, man, we just, we just pop off. We say it like it is, man. We got no problem with telling you you're a cunt. But see, that kind of stuff is really offensive in the USA, man. Like, you guys get really butthurt about that. Let me give you a little example. When I first left New Zealand, I landed in, in LA very, very quickly. I'm talking like the first or second day that I started. We went out for lunch and the waiter that came over, he was kind of being a dick. After like plonking some food down or whatever, he walked away and I turned around and I barely knew these people. And I was just like, F what's that kind of problem? Dude, the, the silence, the silence and the <gasps> kind of looks from, from the people around this table. There was like 10 of us, man. And everybody just kind of stopped and they were like, you need to calm down. Like you, you need, like, what do you, what did you just say? Like, that's, that's the vibe and the feelings that I just got from the whole table. That's the, di the cultural difference was so vast and I felt it immediately right there in that moment that set the tone. Just think of that difference when you're trying to deal with somebody who steps into that meeting room and hits you with a really, really hard topic to talk about. A really radioactive topic. Should we include a trans character into our game? It's not really a discussion about whether or not we should really choose it. Because all around the table, no one wants to say no. No one wants to be the guy that actually says no. Because what happens is, he's going to be the bad guy. He's transphobic now. And it's got nothing to do with that. Me, being who I am... I was the guy that said, no, no, why are we doing that? Like, what's the reason? Are we just, is this just a tick box kind of thing? And I will tell you this, the amount of times that I was called into a meeting room to specifically express my opinion on adding characters into games just because we have to tick them off. That's a real thing. And anybody, any gamer out there that has no idea about what actually goes on, I'm telling you, it's a thing. Diversity hires are a thing. Everybody kind of knows that now. Hey, we need to hire some people. We don't even care if they're good at their job, but we need to hire someone of a, this specific ethnicity. We need to hire someone from the LGBTQ community. It's like we, the skills... What, whatever you need, like skills wise, that is secondary. This is actually part of the reason why I left games. That whole shift in mentality, I, I couldn't in good faith stay a part of that. I just couldn't. It just felt so wrong to me. To me, the game was what was the most important. Making the games for the players, making the games for the gamers, like you guys were my motivation to do what I did. Taking that away and replacing that with like, no, we, we need this angle. We need these people's angle, not the gamer's angle, not the people who are buying our stuff and keeping our company alive. We need the representation of these other people in the studio. That's what's important to us. I couldn't actually in good faith like abide by that. It made no sense to me because it felt like a dynamic shift from the importance being on the end result and the product for our target audience as the highest priority to something that felt more like we need to broaden our target audience and start including everyone into it so that we can maximize our fan base, maximize our dollars. That's great but 
by doing that and handling it in such a way where we're treating things just like a checkbox, our existing audience that's taken us 10 years to build up, they're going to feel that, they're going to know it, and they're going to be turned off by it. So you're, you're, you're opening it up in one way, and you're actually alienating the entire fan base and player base that you've spent all these years building for a few that you're going to be adding on at the end. And I just didn't want to be associated with that anymore. The whole way that it was going, and this started happening more and more and more towards the end of my career. And I can tell you for a fact that I know that it's only gotten worse. And the reason I know that is because I still have a lot of friends who are working in the industry right now that are making games that you guys all know. And some of the stuff that I read them talking about on a daily basis is the same shit that I was going through and worse. It's happening right now, today. And I'm just like, dude, I'm so glad that I left because... That just sounds rubbish. And the end result of that is the games feeling the way that they feel right now. They're all gray area kind of games. And when a game like Space Marines 2 comes out, the game knows exactly who it's for. The game knows exactly what it's trying to do. I don't feel even for one second the developers were trying to slap me around the face with some narrative about what's happening in our world right now. It wasn't woven into the character dialogue. There was no characters talking about, you know, their gender identity or, or any anything political. It was nothing, nothing like that. It was just straight up, we're focused on what we need to do here. This is the task, let's get it done. And it just, it, it, it felt so good. It felt so good to play a game that didn't have any rubbish hacked onto the outside of this already good game. And that's how I think that a lot of these games are coming across. It's like there's a good game under there. But what's happened is that it's like a Katamari ball. They've slapped all this stuff on. Here's a layer of politics. Here's a layer of gender identity. Here's a layer of representation. Here's a layer of diversity. We just slap all this stuff on it, right? And just see how it looks now. So because the skill level was secondary for the people that we hired way back then who are now in a position to push this stuff, it's executed poorly. That's why we have what we have. I bring up Baldur's Gate 3 as an example a lot for this because I believe they absolutely nailed it. There is so much diversity in that game, so much representation in that game, but no one cares about it. No one, no one is using it as a talking point for negativity because regardless of the character's gender or how they identify they all feel very genuine they feel like genuine characters and when i play Baldur's gate 3 i don't feel like larian is trying to teach me a lesson i'm not being preached to at all that's the difference and thinking more on this it's made me remember back when i would play games like call of duty Baldur's gate old jrpgs like grandia or star ocean for example a time where developers spent far less time on real world social agendas political ideologies things like that that's that's very us right now and more time on raw fun and just straight up escapism and i was like shit man we need more of that more of a focus raw fun and escapism i guess ultimately what i'm trying to say is we need less no balls we need more developers out there that are willing to stand up for making games solely about the fun of what they're trying to create and less about everything else I'm pretty sure I lost a whole bunch of subscribers and followers for making this video, but that's just the way it goes, man. I, I'm, I stand by what I'm saying in this video, and I hope that, you know, there's at least some kind of dialogue that we can have down in the comments. I'm, again, I'm 100% open to being completely wrong. The last video that I made, I actually, I, I've actually backtracked on a couple of the things that I said through dialogue with you guys in the comments. And maybe I should make another video on the whole on the whole Dragon Age Veilguard vale character creator because I have my mind has changed on a couple of things. But that's not for this video. We'll do this on the next one. Once again, thank you guys. I really appreciate all of your support. The Patreons, Legends, everybody who subscribes to me here on YouTube. My Twitch channel. It's obviously the most supporters over there. I really appreciate you guys. You, you should see all of your names right here on the screen. Just as a little thank you. Um, see you guys in the next one.